Hey guys, and welcome to Studio Time. This is a crash course doing some interesting sound design. And in this particular case, um, I have two very basic samples uh, that I made that I'm gonna turn into sound design. So first, I have loaded up here a very simple piano. with a little delay on it and with a reverb on it. And the second instrument that I've got loaded up is a kalimba. Okay, so how do I turn this into this? Or, for instance, this. Or, for instance, this. What I did is very simple. I record in one note only of both these instruments. So the kalimba and the piano. The piano, I recorded this note. In an ideal world, wouldn't that be great? Uh, let's go to QA South, here we go. So this is just one note being played. This is one note of the kalimba being played. And now what I do is really great feature of Cubase, and that is the sampler track. I showed it as being part of my new template. So let me open that sampler track right there. So at this point, it's not doing anything. And it says here, drop audio sample or MIDI part. You can drop a MIDI part there and it will record in the background your MIDI parts to whatever plugin is going to uh, and put the audio in here. Or you can drop the audio in straight away. So if I do that, this is happening. Boom, and there we see, our. this is our note. So I can do a few things. Uh, for instance, well, I can do a lot of things if I were this, uh, were the right glasses. Without those, I cannot do shit. So let's normalize the sample. You see it's playing. Um, I can start, start the sampler later. The same key commands for normal Cubase also apply here, things like zooming in. So I can zoom in right to the start and I can give it like a little crossfade in. And now we can just play this sample. So immediately you get a very unique quality uh, because of it, because we sampled that note. And now if I play a few octaves lower, You got a very interesting quality. Um, some basic things that we can do um, is, for, ins for instance, attack and release. So I can give it, for instance, a release, a long release, or even longer. Let's 
zoom. Let's go there. Let's make it quite so quite a bit longer, like a few seconds. nice quality when you only use one sample to create an instrument. Um, but now it has all these other uh, uh, things that you can do. So you can do audio warp, um, you can do slice, um, you could set it to a really bad quality, uh, like vintage. So you get a little bit of that uh, bit reduction being, uh, being added or you go for a, a very high quality extreme. So you get almost like the highest quality uh, possible. There are simple things like pitch shift and modulation to the pitch shift. Uh, the same thing for the filter, uh, you can modulate that um, as well with a separate um, uh, envelope. Um, so this is a high pass, uh, low pass filter. Uh, you can do tube, you can do like a uh, bit reduction, um, classic filter type, resonance. You got all these different filters that you can play with. Um, so it's an interesting way of quickly doing uh, some sound design on it. So what I did in uh, my example, for instance, is I would um, select al alternate looping. And you get something very really interesting, uh, and that is that you can loop, for instance, that's why I used an echo on top of this. Um, let's zoom out. Uh, let's bring that here. So now you get like an interesting way of looping. You could, for instance, snap to zero crossing. So when you now move this around, this it should pick uh, where the wave goes through zero so there's no digital clicking. No digital clicking. So by choosing this mode, you get this really nice dreamy quality where the looping of the sample is actually gonna create uh, some unexpected transients to happen while you're playing. So you get like a really interesting uh, quality uh, because of that. And so uh, if I go back to what I did, so now you can see what I did. Uh, so again, you see here that alternate looping kind of thing. Um, but I used the audio warp here um, and I played a lot with the format. Get a really nice quality. Uh, if I go to the warped piano filter, I turn it almost into like a drone with a filter on it. Uh, Uh, these are really cool things to mix with your standard uh, orchestral recording or even have this, for instance, a piano like this, have it sit behind a real played piano um, with the same notes being played. And you can get a really interesting texture, texture of like a normal piano 
with some warped version uh, behind it that is more sound design in nature. So my warped uh, kalimba, for instance, is something very similar. So if I go to uh, my empty instrument right here, and now I'm dropping the kalimba in this thing, um, and... Uh, And I could, for instance, say, okay, I want to normalize this. Here we go. And it says root key C3. Let's make that C6. Boom. That uh, already sounds really great. And then I go for, let's say, vintage. Hi. Standard. Really interesting sound. And if you, for instance, were to do something else, this is interesting too. So, um, if I, for instance, were um, take my standard piano here, right, um, and let's uh, let's play something. Okay, I'm gonna hit retrospect record and. It doesn't work ah, like this. It doesn't work. Uh, I think my button here, uh, the key command is broken, but I just did it with uh, my key command shift start. Okay, so now I grab this MIDI part and see what happens. It's brilliant. So I'm just going to drop the MIDI part there and it needs to do a little bit of thinking. And the beautiful thing is that this is an instrument coming back in Cubase from an external computer, a Vienna Ensemble Pro computer. And Cubase just seems to understand what needs to be done here. So it activates uh, that VC output, quickly records a name, and boom, there we have it. Isn't that a beautiful thing? So I'm just quickly going to normalize this. Now, what is really cool, if we dis set this to alternate loop and we bring the loop parameter back to here, you can get really interesting sounds as well. Solo. And then if I go to my envelope, for instance, here, and let's uh, zoom out. Uh, I actually mean meant the other zoom out. Uh, and let's make this relatively long. Um, you can get really interesting things that some of you might uh, potentially uh, remember from how certain hip hop tracks were being made. Or you can play some things at the same time. Um,
you get a really interesting character when you when you play with that. I use that a lot, uh, particularly with piano, but also with strings. So when you do like a like a riff, and then you resample that in the sampler and you loop it weirdly, you start playing with some of these parameters, and you can get a really really interesting sound really 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 quick. Um, so the reason why I showed these particular two examples is that in another episode where we're going to talk about Army of the Dead, this technique is constantly being used um, for vocals, for uh, breaking trees, for piano information, uh, for percussion information, for orchestral information, for choir information. So this is why um, this is a pretty handy uh, trick uh, to utilize yourself. So I just wanted to focus on this particular thing um, without going too deep in other things. So if I were to delete this little thing right here, and for instance, I would, um, oh, uh, let's take a guitar. Let's put, put it on record. Just a quick example. I'm just going to make you a quick cut. Boom. Throw it in there. It's MIDI. Um, also, this is an instrument that, oh, this is actually loaded in Cubase. So this is immediately a contact instrument that is being recorded. And here we have it. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. I'm going to do the same trick. I'm going to switch alternate looping on. Um, See if I can do something like that. It's a really interesting way to create like interesting soundscapes relatively quick. Now, if I were, for instance, to open up my mixer channel here, and now, for instance, I would put like a, a great reverb, uh, like the Pro R uh, on it, and I would select um, very large, let's select like the black hole uh, preset, and now I'm gonna play again and See what and so my mix is set to 100%, so you get a really interesting uh, quality uh, because of it. And so, depending on what you're throwing into this arpeggio, so I threw in a hard minor and a hard nine, but if you avoid uh, very typical harmonic progressions, uh, it gets interesting too, because basically what that means is that if I open up my MIDI part one more time, so let's open it up, uh, let's just get rid of the three. But let's play... Uh, just this, okay? 
Um, let's throw that MIDI part again into uh, into the sampler because I haven't saved this thing yet. Um, okay, so now I need to normalize one more time because it's a new sample. I go to the beginning. I choose alternate loop. Um, let's oh, let's loop it a little shorter. Uh, let's see there. We still have that beautiful reverb sitting on top of it. Um, and now I can play more chords because I am actually avoiding a hard minor. So. interesting way to very quickly create really really cool sounds anyway this was just like some quick tips to do this yourself but you can always do this with any type of sampler so you can record like a little audio file and you do it in contact or you do it in another sampler that you like to use like the EXS24 that comes with logic or you use um, for instance the UVI sampler you know uh, the Falcon you know if you're running Pro Tools it doesn't matter. I just wanted to show you the easy of sound design, how quickly and easy it goes in Cubase with the internal sampler, but by recording a file on your own and then import it into your favorite sampler, just select a root key and start like doing some cool sound design. Save it for any future use. Okay guys, I hope you liked this episode and I'll see you next week. Bye.